Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been a little bit, I've been a little busy, but I'm so glad to be here and talk to you about a gun. I'm very excited to show you guys. I know you know about it because you know, you play video games and stuff. Just like me, I learned about the MP9 uh, through you know Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, and I am so happy to show you the Berger and Tomet TP9 SMG, you could call it, or pistol. Um, this little guy is uh, packed with a lot of features that I think are super cool, and it's just, it's so unique looking. I can't wait to show you guys what it is, how it shoots, what I think of it. So let's get into that. So like many gun people nowadays, new gun owners, uh, a lot of people have got into guns through video games, movies, uh, media in general. The MP9 is something that's been featured a lot in a lot of you know law enforcement type movies, shooters. Um, I'm not sure if it's in Rainbow Six, uh, but you know Call of Duty, a lot of those style of video games, MP9 is featured. The MP9 has kind of been something that has been praised for its compactness as well as its firepower. Um, this one is not fully auto, unfortunately, but in full auto, it would be awesome, I'm sure. But the TP9 or MP9 is extremely compact, so this one is equipped with a suppressor, uh, but it can be removed, um, just like this, rotating the collar and removed. So that alone right there, and by the way, this is also with the stock folded back. So this little guy is fully shoulderable. Um, this is technically a, an SBR. So this is a short barreled rifle, thanks to legal classification jargon, if you will. But that being said, this right here is by all means a compact pistol. Uh, removing the brace, of course, this comes from BNT as a pistol. So, uh, I mean, just looking at that, that's just a little bit larger profile than I guess a Glock 17. Um, I mean a little bit back here, but a full 30 round magazine. Um, I mean, this TP9 is incredibly compact, has a lot of um, you know firepower in a small uh, shape. So while it does have a lot of similarities with the Glock 17, this is a completely unique design in the fact that it is a sort of a locking delayed blowback mechanism. So I looked into it and I couldn't get exactly the, the uh, distinct answer, but as far as I could tell, it is a locking rotating bolt design. So it's not direct blowback. It's not just like a, a simple blowback mechanism. There is a locking mechanism of this gun. Um, you know, much like the MP9, the famous submachine gun, this one actually does have a delayed action um, that makes it to where it's not so sharp. I will say it is kind of a sharp uh, recoil impulse. Um, there is a lot of weight in this bolt, you know, when it cycles back, um, but it's pretty comfortable. And also you get pretty good suppression when you have a delay in the mechanism. Um, you know, you're not getting a lot of port pop that you would with a straight blowback design. So something that's kind of standard nowadays is ambidextrous controls. The TP9 does have a right side and a left side selector switch. Um, that's, that being said, the left side is much bigger um, because you know everyone is right-handed typically. Um, but it is ambidextrous as well as magazine release. We have a right and a left side release. So that's pretty much standard nowadays. 
I would definitely say that, you know, if a firearm doesn't have that in 2022, it's, you know, it's kind of like what, what's going on. Um, one thing that is sort of a pet peeve of mine is the fact that this is a plastic charging handle. Um, I will say that, yes, it, it does reduce weight. You know, you don't have a metal charging handle that's taking weight. But those of you, uh, you know, American like me, love to, you know, to really grab that charging handle of your AR, rack it back. It just sort of feels a little flimsy. Um, that being said, I mean, I'm sure that this is for a reason and it hasn't broken on me. It's just one of those things like it just feels kind of weird, especially coming from a Swiss manufactured project or product that's not necessarily cheap. So the TP9 does come with a top Picatinny rail um, to where you can uh, put lasers, lights, accessories on it. Um, I will say the iron sights aren't really super useful, um, but you know everyone is going to run a red dot or a holographic sight such as this EOTech, um, and it makes it much nicer, much more user friendly, and it looks pretty nice with all FDE on it, if I say so myself. As far as other accessory mounting points, it does have a Picatinny section on this side, the right side. It does not have one on the left, um, but I find it much more comfortable um, because you can put sort of put your support hand on your left and then not have that interference uh, with this Picatinny section. Um, that being said, there is another really great accessory mounting point um, if you opt for the suppressor, which I really advocate for this because this is a lot of fun, but this combined with the TP9 is where it really becomes a great package. So if you didn't see that how well it goes on, um, you can see the locking lugs of the TP9 suppressor. It's sort of like a beefed up tri-lug. Um, it is kind of proprietary, uh, but it goes on nice and easy, rather quick, and it just ratchets down, and it's uh, nice and secure. There is really no play. Uh, for those of you who have a suppressor that does have side-to-side -side play, say for example with me, my Knight's Arm NT4, it's meant to have play, um, but sometimes it, it drives people wild. This is really rock solid. Um, I will say that I have noticed if I shoot it really hard, let's say like, you know, uh, a couple mags worth, you know, consecutive, it does somewhat uh, back off, but it does stay nice and secure. So the suppressor that I have on it right now is pretty special. If you can't tell from the front, it's a little bit different than the older generation TP9 suppressors. This is called the RBS, or Reduced Back Pressure Suppressor, um, from BNT, which is one of their newer offerings for 2022. Um, they're coming with a lot of uh, suppressors nowadays to the United States from um, Europe that are this RBS or reduced back pressure series. Um, and that's kind of the new thing nowadays on the suppressor market. We want to reduce back pressure, um, you know, make them better on hosts. You know, um, that's kind of the, the shift nowadays. Uh, but this RBS suppressor on the TP9 is incredibly good sounding. Um, so it is really thick. Uh, this is definitely a super thick boy, but... Uh, there's a lot of cha uh, chamber room in here for expansion, so I think that's where it gets its really good tone. Um, you can see in a video that I have right here, I compared it to my MP5 with an Omega 9K, and honestly, I think that this thing has sounded a lot better, even though the MP5 is kind of like the king of suppressed firearms. So back to my point about adapting things to another uh, area on the gun, this suppressor does have a Picatinny rail section under it that is perfect for mounting lights or lasers under the barrel um, right in front of your uh, sort of hand stop. So let's address the elephant in the room. It's no surprise that this has some mm, issues. Um, that being said, it's in the design. This was meant to be a full auto submachine gun for law enforcement or military personnel. Um, it's not supposed to be a really nice fine-tuned 9mm PCC for civilians. The trigger sucks. Um, the trigger's not good. That being said, I have actually experienced it for myself that there is a break-in period. Um, I've shot about three or 400 rounds through this, and as I get closer to, towards the end of that three or 400 rounds, it has been able to um, you know, give me more of a distinct break. That being said, it's not a good trigger. Uh, but like I said, 
those of you who understand, you know, the, the process of making a full auto submachine gun into a semi-auto, um, it's kind of in the design. You can't really make it a really good civilian gun and get a good trigger. So if I show you again, it's kind of like a Glock trigger, but really, really bad. Um, it has no <laughs> really reset. So I'll try to show you the reset. So it's either there, it, 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 it's, it's not great. I will say it's getting a little bit better as I shoot the gun, uh, but this is the complaint that a lot of people have with the TP9. That being said, I think there are a lot of uh, a lot of advantages that this thing has that kind of make up for that. But that being said, if you were really dead set on getting that really good trigger on a gun, if you're a Geisley snob like me, it might be something you're like, and I wish it had a better trigger. There are a lot of BNT offerings that do have really good triggers, like the APC lines. Uh, but the TP9, it's kind of the nature of the beast. So what are my overall impressions of the BNT TP9? Well, I love it. Um, I'm definitely someone who more sides with uh, aesthetics and nostalgia versus, you know, practicality. Um, otherwise, I just have a bunch of Glocks. Um, but I think that this is a really good looking gun. It's a lot of fun. Um, this suppressor is incredible. I really, really enjoy the suppressor. Um, I haven't really had any other BNT suppressors. That being said, I do have a couple on order with Underground Ordnance, which by the way, you should check them out. They have a lot of BNT offerings, um, but I have a lot of BNT suppressors in the works, but this is an incredible sounding suppressor. Um, you actually can use it on other hosts, even though it is the proprietary system. Um, I'll show you a few pictures that I found on the internet of people using them on things like a Scorpion Evo, as well as an MP5. Um, it's a really good, suppressor. I'm really impressed with it. Would I buy it? Absolutely. Um, I would definitely advocate it. If you can swing something that you don't necessarily need, it's more of a want. This is a really good looking gun. Um, also perfectly balances on its, its suppressor. Um, you know, it looks really good on the gram. Um, it's a good looking gun. Um, the trigger, not so great. So if you're interested in purchasing a BNT TP9, definitely go out to check Underground Ordnance. Um, they have a ton of these in stock um, and they have a ton of the RBS, the new limited edition FDE suppressors. I'm not sure if they're limited edition, but I know that Underground Ordnance has a lot of them and they are really good guys to work with. Thank you Underground Ordnance for providing me for a review. Um, go ahead and check them out. They're great guys. So um, thank you. I really appreciate you guys sticking in to the channel. I know I haven't been posting a lot. I promise that will improve, um, but thank you so much. Have a good day. See you later.